behalf of your John Deere dealer, the first thing we'd like to say is welcome, glad to see you on this 22nd John Deere day. And to show his appreciation, and to show you all that new, for your pleasure and information, this day has been planned for you. You'll see new methods of farming that can change the life of every farmer everywhere in the nation. You'll see new machinery that will open your eyes, the nearest thing. Put new methods and machinery together, you will find that this is true. Farming can be easier and better, and more economical too. Now if you pardon the repetition, once again we'd like to say, you're welcome, glad to be you. On the 22nd, John Have you tasted maple sugar from Vermont? Come with us and we will take you for a jaunt. Come along and be our guest at the time of year that's best when we're making maple syrup in Vermont. When we're making maple syrup in Vermont, it's the greatest fun that anyone could want. When the sap begins to run, we all get up with the sun and go gathering sap for syrup in Vermont. Oh, the maple woods are lovely in Vermont. It's a place that everybody wants to haunt. It's a very thrilling sight. Everything is dressed in white when we're gathering sap for syrup in Vermont. Covered bridges are common in the picturesque Green Mountains. And nestled here is the village of Woodstock, one of the most beautiful communities in Vermont. The first settlers arrived in 1765, and by the year 1800, Woodstock had grown to a population of 2,100. It was then, and still is, an agricultural community, which derives part of its income from the surrounding sugar bush country. In the early days, sugaring was a very important event in the spring, as most people depended on maple sugar for their sweetening. And today, the maple sugar industry still flourishes in the Woodstock area. Sugaring begins in the early spring, long before the first thaw. Trails have to be broken before the laborious task of tapping trees and hanging buckets can begin. Two experienced New Englanders can hang as many as 400 buckets in a single day. When all the trees have been tapped, the waiting begins. Then one day, the air has a different smell. There is a power in the sun's brightness. The time is here. The sap has begun to run. In days gone by, sap was gathered with the aid of hand-hewn shoulder yokes, like the one shown here. The yoke is old, but the girl is young. She's Miss Marjorie McNall, daughter of a sugar maker and a recent queen of the maple harvest. Another early method of gathering the sap involved oxen. On the Arthur Maxim farm, the old tradition still exists, and each spring finds three generations heading into the sugar bush. The Maxims hang about 1,500 buckets and their blue ribbon oxen remain as a nostalgic tie with early Vermont. Sugaring is one of the few remaining jobs for old Dobbin. On the Harold Eastman farm, horses haul an average of 18,000 gallons of sap each spring. When boiled down, that's a little over 500 gallons of maple syrup. 
While the practice of maple sugaring is old, the method of harvesting has progressed. And today on many farms, the small crawler tractor has taken over. We're on the Howard Burns farm in South Woodstock, where each year they produce about 125 gallons of maple syrup. It's a winter wonderland that keeps two men busy most of the day with a sled and a four-barrel gathering tank. There are more than 1,000 buckets in the sugar grove, and during the three to four week sap run, each bucket must be emptied every day. An old sugar-making maxim tells the farmer to gather often and boil at once. It takes about 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. The length and quantity of the sap run is determined by the temperature. Best results occur when the nights are cold and the days warm. An average tree may yield 15 gallons of sap each season. The sled with the first of the year's run arrives at the sugar house, and before long, it will be transformed into fancy maple syrup. Unloading is a simple matter. The sap hose is tapped, and the crystal clear liquid cascades down a chute into the storage vat. Steam coming through the roof means there's life inside. The fire is being stoked for the year's run. This typical weather-beaten sugar house was built back in 1910 and hasn't missed a season. Since 98% of the sap is water, processing involves boiling until a proper concentration remains. A full cord of wood is required to make about 15 gallons of maple syrup, and the hotter the fire, the better the product. Mr. Burns has been in the sugar business since 1900, and his knowledge of the trade was handed down to him by his grandfather. This evaporator pan handles about three barrels of sap per hour, thus producing three gallons of syrup per hour. Testing is done with a long-handled scoop, and when the fluid tears off the dipper in a sheet, it's time to syrup off. This batch is ready, but what about the grade of the product? Well, the state of Vermont supplies a guide to all maple sugar producers, and by law, their syrup must be marked accordingly. If the syrup is lighter in color than this bottle, it is grade B. Lighter than this one, it's grade A. And lighter than this one, it's fancy. Sugaring is an important springtime business for the farmers of Vermont, as it is for farmers in other areas where the sugar maple flourishes. And the products of this picturesque business are a tempting reminder of springtime in Vermont. <laughs> Yes, strike up the band for the biggest news in the Corn Belt. Six-row farming is here. John Deere presents another first for modern farming. Now you can plant and cultivate corn and soybeans six rows at a time. You solve four big planting and cultivating problems. You beat the weather, whip the labor shortage, cut high labor and field costs, and best of all, finish the work in about one-third less time. 
We're mighty proud to present this new 694 six-row corn and soybean planter. It's an implement that's tailor-made for today's bigger and more powerful tractors. Transporting is a simple matter. Trailed endwise, the planter goes through narrow gates and is easily transported on the narrowest country roads. In the field, eye appeal and new low-to-the-ground design is apparent. Here is a six-row planter that check plants, hill drops, or drills with speed and accuracy second to none. No matter which way you plant, the seed is placed where you want it and at uniform depth. You can travel five miles per hour without sacrificing planting accuracy. Like all modern planters, the 694 has two fertilizer attachments available, one for dry and the other for liquid. This planter is equipped with boxes for dry fertilizer. Note that the low design permits the tailgate of the truck to remain conveniently above the planter, and it's no trick at all to fill the 900-pound hoppers. Application rates for the dry fertilizer range from 100 to 825 pounds per acre. This 694 is equipped with the liquid fertilizer attachment. The big capacity tanks gravity feed the liquid through sediment jars with filter screens, through metering heads, and into the soil. Now let's look at some additional features of this new six-row planter. It's equipped with an exceptionally long hitch, which gives the planter excellent trailing capacity. Hydraulic power troll, coupled with power steering on the tractor, takes the hard work out of turning. A second touch of the power troll lever and the planter is again lowered to planting depth. Row spacings of the 694 range from 28 to 40 inches. Planter runners have built-in spring pressure and the press wheels can be quickly and easily adjusted to firm the soil over the seed regardless of soil conditions. When the crop is ready to cultivate, a 60 series cultivator takes over, six rows at a time. This is equipment that allows you to squeeze 90 minutes of work into each hour in the field, allows you to handle more acres with less help, and best of all, lets you get the job done on time in rush seasons. The new six row cultivator has all the better vision, greater strength, and good work features of previous John Deere cultivators. Changing this wide six-row cultivator into a narrower unit for transport is simple. A couple of bolts hold the end gangs in place. Remove them and fold the unit in. Then insert a locking pin to hold it in place during transport. Repeat the same action to fold the second unit, and away you go through any standard gate, down any road that you can travel with a four-row cultivator. In a matter of minutes, we're cultivating six rows at a time. Watch the action of the cultivator rigs in this close-up. Looking across six rows, you can see the sturdy rig construction that means steady, good work. Here's a worm's eye view slowed down so you can better see the good work the cultivator is doing. The 720 and other John Deere tractors are setting new fuel economy records on thousands of farms and new six-row equipment permits taking full advantage of the power of these modern tractors. Yes, here is the dawn of a new era in agriculture, and many farmers are switching over to six-row operation. Mr. Les Bowler operates a 600-acre corn farm near Winnebago, Minnesota. This is the second year he has used six-row equipment exclusively. Mr. Bowler works constantly to build up soil fertility and spends a great amount of time studying and applying modern agricultural practices. Say, Mr. Bowler, would you please tell us what six-row farming is doing for you? Sure, I'd be glad to. I suppose the biggest thing it's done is to increase my work output per man by 50%. And today, with an inadequate supply of part-time labor, that's very important. Another thing, with today's high overhead, the efficiency of one larger unit over two small ones is very desirable. I've done a lot of work with minimum tillage. By combining this practice with six-row equipment for today's modern farming, 
have shown a substantial savings in time and money. This spring, I averaged 75 acres a day with a six-row planter. And now we are able to work 125 acres a day with a six-row cultivator. Public interest in this area proves the trend toward six-row farming. And personally, I am completely sold on it. Thank you very much, Mr. Bowler. You, too, can have the advantages of six-row farming with its new low costs, its speed in getting the job done when the weather is right. Six-row farming is ready for you now. If you want to save time and labor, and you want to save money, too, then here's a good suggestion, neighbor. It can solve the problem for you. Start farming big, neighbor, that's the plan. And with John Deere equipment, you can. Yes, the crops grow high toward the sun in the sky when water is brought to the land. Water and soil and sunshine. These are the basic requirements for all forms of life on this earth of ours. If any one of the three is in short supply, the crops and livestock and people and countries cannot reach their peak of development. This is the story of a southern Nebraska community that grew up with its weather eye on the skies, always hoping for enough moisture to finish a crop, good soil and plenty of sunshine, but with its destiny tied to the rain clouds. We are talking about the rich agricultural area near Geneva, Nebraska, and the neighboring community around the city of York. Farmers and town folks and agricultural agencies in the area decided to do something other than wait for the rains to come. And today, a new prosperity, a new feeling of security has come to thousands of farm homes and to the community as a whole. Water is the key that is unlocking this new wealth. Water pumped from man-made or natural ponds. Water from streams delivered to crops whose thirst is never ending. Water that comes from wells drilled into an inexhaustible lake that lies 200 feet below the surface. Drilling outfits like this have sunk 2,000 wells in this southern Nebraska area in the last few years. There's always rejoicing when the pumps first prove the volume of water at the bottom of the hole. When the wells are proved, it's time to level the fields if flow irrigation is to be used. The powerful 820 tractor and Hancock scraper level the land at lowest possible cost. This is a gently rolling country where high spots can be cut off and spread into the low spots at low cost. When the carrier is full, the blade is raised hydraulically. The double bucket is tilted hydraulically. And the soil is deposited and spread at any desired thickness. And here is the way to finish the job of leveling. Use a land shaper that trims off the high spots, fills in the low. Let's watch this close-up action as the blade fills and empties more accurately than you can do it by hand. Notice the exclusive rear blade position, which assures minimum vertical movement of the blade when the rear tractor wheels pass over a hump in the field. 
three-point suspension with wheels behind the blade practically eliminates side tilting, assures a better job of finishing the fields. If feeder ditches are needed to carry the water from pump to field, they are made easily and quickly with this modern ditcher and a powerful 620 tractor. You can make ditches as deep as 24 inches, as wide as 60 inches with this outfit. It's the simple, low-cost way to make and maintain ditches for irrigation or drainage. If it's pasture or hayland that's to be irrigated, it pays to break up the hard pan with a pan breaker. Water penetrates faster and deeper, saturates the subsoil. This husky integral pan breaker penetrates as deep as 22 inches cracking the hard pan and creating a reservoir that holds moisture longer, reduces frequency of irrigation. This corrugator is another aid to better irrigation of pastures, hayland, or fields. It makes well-packed furrows that carry the water around slopes, across the field, or holds it for even penetration. Water is brought to the land in many ways. A sprinkler system may offer the ideal way to irrigate. These systems may be installed permanently or built into huge portable sprinkler units. This particular one in a field near Henderson, Nebraska, covers about two and a half acres per sweep. Still bigger is this giant, the world's largest portable sprinkler, which covers five and one half acres with the sweep of its arms. Most farmers consider sprinkler irrigation as second choice because of the labor of moving pipe. Some say it has an advantage over other types because of the exactness with which water can be put down. A common method used in Nebraska is gravity or surface irrigation from a ditch. Basically, this dates back to the ancient Egyptians. But of course, the aluminum siphon tubes are new. Upkeep of the main ditch is cut to a minimum because of the tubes. The use of aluminum gated pipe is a newer method of getting water to the crops and it saves a lot of hard work. We're on the farm of Mr. Dave Broadwell. An 820 diesel powers one of the deep well pumps. One of his sons, Frank, is in the field. Say, Mr. Broadwell, we'd like to know what irrigation means to your family. Well, uh, that's easy to answer. It uh, generally means the difference between a good crop uh half a crop or a third of a crop or none at all. Back in 1955, we didn't irrigate uh, anything and our crop amounted to absolutely nothing. Uh, that's when we decided to irrigate. We sank four wells uh, during the winter and in 1956, we irrigated about 300 acres. Our uh, crop jumped from zero to 80 bushels to the acre. On the strength of that, we uh, drilled three more this year. Irrigation is genuine crop insurance to our family. Thank you, Mr. Broadwell. You're welcome. Let's take a look at just what we mean by crop insurance. Here is some unirrigated corn in Fillmore County. The year has been very good for dryland farmers because rainfall is above average. But even so, this corn is beginning to show signs of insufficient moisture at tasseling time when it's most needed. Compare the last scene with this field of corn. They're both in the same county, about three miles apart. It's the same soil, the same sunshine, the same weather, but here, water has been added. Irrigation has been the key to growth, and this corn promises to make 100 bushels per acre. Look at the record. Fillmore County statistics show that for unirrigated corn, the average yield hit an all-time low in 1934 of one bushel per acre. The best recorded year was in 1920. The yield rose to 38 bushels per acre. On irrigated corn, the story is different. The lowest recorded average occurred in 1951. It was 53 bushels per acre. The highest average was reached in 1956 an impressive 74 bushels to the acre. Some of the irrigation water in Fillmore County comes from the Blue River. It's pumped by smaller engines like this new John Deere four-cylinder 40 horsepower model. 
Say, gentlemen, are you the two O'Connor brothers? Yes, I'm Paul, and this is Ralph. Glad we found you. We'd like to hear about your experiences with irrigation. Sure. Back in 1954, we started pumping from the Blue River with a different booster pump, of course. Since then, we've added a well each year. We have 350 irrigated acres, mostly corn and milo. It's all flood irrigation. Each year, we level some more land and eventually hope to have our entire 800 acres under control. Irrigation is really profitable, too. When you stop to think that our average corn yield was 19 bushel before, and now it has jumped to 98 bushel. Sure has. It's little wonder we're so enthusiastic about irrigation. It's a part of modern farming. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Another source of irrigation water is the pond. This one on the farm of Guy Brown, Jr. has supplied water for a number of summers. Ponds, like streams and rivers, are an economical source of water. But there's always the possibility they will dry up when most needed. On George Brown's farm, a new John Deere six-cylinder engine, which develops about 60 horsepower, is connected to a six-inch deep well pump. It has ample reserve power to operate under continuous load conditions and lots of built-in stamina to prevent costly breakdowns. This is the growing season when water is most needed and dependable pumping engines ensure an ample supply. There are many ways to pump water for the crops. Some prefer an electric motor, but the operating costs are higher. This is another version of the deep well ditch and siphon tube method of irrigation. This farmer is moving the tubes and starting them again. The experts call it pumping the tube. Water, water everywhere, and more than the crops can drink. 1,500 gallons of it every minute from a 156-foot well and 10-inch pump. The farm is owned by Dave H. Epp. That's his son making one of the three daily inspections of tractor and pump. It runs day and night, and the flat belt drive has proved very satisfactory. Mr. Epp told us, and we quote, I pump 90,000 gallons of water an hour with my 720 LP for 30 cents. Yes, 90,000 gallons is a lot of water, and 30 cents per hour puts the cost at rock bottom. A good crop of Milo like this, raised at such low cost, is a real profit maker. Here's another good crop of Milo, this one being grown for certified seed on the Lauber Brothers farm. Mr. Lauber, we hear that you've been irrigating for years. Yes, I have. I've been, was one of the first to irrigate here in Fillmore County. My first well went down way back in 1938. It was a shallow well and we used open ditch methods only. Through the years, we have gradually improved our methods and switched to deep wells gated pipe and sprinkler system. By the way, you know I have been retired for a number of years, so why not let me call one of my two sons to come over here and finish the story. Wendell, come over here a minute, please. Wendell, I've been telling these gentlemen about how we got started in irrigation. Will you finish the story for them? Sure, Dad. We grow and sell certified seed, and the first planting each year just has to grow. That's why we irrigate throughout the growing season. We irrigate regularly, and uh, not the supplemental treatment that some people use. We make it a full-time job. In fact, I don't think we could stay in business if it wasn't for the good supply of water we have. Do you, Dad? No, I don't, son. Water and irrigation are a necessary part of our lives. They are the basis of our economic structure. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you. Today, Fillmore County is still only one-third irrigated. This Milo is being grown on unirrigated land, and you can almost see it begging for water. Look at the difference. This field has been irrigated from the start. Moving these two fields side by side, fields that were photographed within minutes of each other, we can readily see the difference, a difference that water alone can make. But is there an end to this water, this liquid gold that's stored under the surface? 
Mr. Ivan Lindstrom, the Fillmore County agent, says that engineering and geological tests in the area show that the water table has remained about the same, and in a few rare instances has risen as much as one and one-tenth inches. During the last 15 years, the number of wells in Fillmore County has grown from five to more than 500. Yet during all that time, there has been no appreciable change in the level of the water table. One big job with siphon tubes is checking them regularly to see that they keep flowing. One York County farmer, Mr. John Dell, has solved the problem in a very modern way. He has turned hours of walking the ditches into minutes of riding them. Mr. Dell, we understand that you're one of the old timers in the field of irrigation. Will you tell us about it? Well, I'm not so old, but I've been irrigating about as long as anyone else in this part of the country. A uh, matter of fact, I was one of the first ones to sink an irrigation well in York County. People wondered whether I'd make it in those days. Same as they questioned my judgment when I hauled in the first bag of fertilizer. They're all doing it now, and I've watched irrigation take over the county, same as I've watched farming methods improve. Irrigation has brought prosperity to York County, and I believe we couldn't exist without it. But now you've got to excuse me, fellas. I've got to go and check some more of these siphon tubes. We sure will, Mr. Dell. And thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time. This story of success with irrigation, told by the people who live with it, is abundant proof of the ability of men and machines to meet the challenge of nature when the rains are not plentiful. For these communities in south central Nebraska, irrigation is security and the key to prosperity. Nature provides more than enough water for everyone, but it takes the ingenuity of man to put it in the right place at the right time. When water is brought to the land, when water is brought to the land, and the crops will grow high toward the sun in the sky, when water Are those hay bales? What kind of a man could throw bales around like this with a temperature at 100 degrees in the shade? Wouldn't you give your eye teeth to hire a fellow who could do that all day? Sure you would. But why not do it yourself with this new bale ejector attachment for the 14T twine tie baler, which tosses the bales into wagons automatically? It's the backbone of a revolutionary, new, one-man way of making hay. The companion unit in this system of handling hay is a brand new elevator and barn conveyor. This is automation in the hay field. Every farmer who grows hay will make more money with this simple, efficient bale ejector. You'll save time, get better hay, eliminate back-breaking labor. Next year, thousands of farmers will be saying, remember when we had to pick up bales by hand? Remember the heat, the dust, the aches and pains of making hay the old-fashioned way? The new bale ejector will pay for itself in a short time with money saved and hired help. It makes compact bales approximately one-half size. When the wagon is out of position on corners, you simply pull a rope control, Release it, and presto, two bales go into the wagon at once. Let's take a look at how simple the new bale ejector attachment really is. It mounts directly on the rear of the 14T baler only. 
It's an exclusive John Deere development that eliminates at least 50% of the manpower required with ordinary balers. Power is taken directly from the tractor's power takeoff through this extended shaft. Any tractor capable of handling this baler alone will have power aplenty with the bale ejector attachment as well. To show you how the ejector works, let's remove this shield and one side of the bale chute screen. Power is transmitted from the power shaft through these enclosed gears to a roller chain drive and this constant running clutch. As each bale moves up the chute, it trips this lever, activating linkage, which in turn throws this dog into the constant running clutch, supplying power to this bell crank, which transmits the power to eject the bales. These ejector arms grip the bale as it is delivered from the bale case into the bale chute and tosses it into the wagon. To illustrate, let's eject the bale now in the bale chute with the rope control. Watch the action of the clutch, bell crank, and ejector arms. Whoops, there it goes. Once more, without the bale. Simple, isn't it? The revolutionary new bale ejector and the outstanding 14T twine tie baler make a cost-cutting team for every hay grower, large or small. Summing it up, the new bale ejector eliminates men on the trailer behind the baler, pickup men, and bale loading machines. It saves valuable time when time is money. It means better hay in the barn. Bales are never left in the field to lose feed value. The other half of John Deere's one-man hay baling system is the new elevator and barn conveyor for storing bales automatically. No more back-breaking lifting and stacking. No more working and stifling hot mouths. Bales are fed into this big eight-foot hopper designed for use with any John Deere bale-sized portable elevator. This hold-down guide keeps bales moving up the elevator smoothly. Here's the only time you touch the bales until they're fed to your cattle. Because they're half size, you can handle them with a pitchfork. Here's a demonstration showing what goes on inside the barn. The new barn conveyor distributes bales through the full length of the mow. The conveyor is hung from the hay track or ridge pole in sections to fit your barn. By simply crossing the guide rails, you can distribute bales at 10 foot intervals in the barn to the left or to the right side of the barn. Short bales require no stacking. They tumble automatically into place. In addition to the 14T, there are two new larger balers, the 214W wire tie and the 214T twine tie balers. These balers follow the design of the famous 14T, but they make heavier, more dense bales, bales that weigh up to 80 pounds. You can make your bales in any length up to 50 inches. The new 214T twine tie baler meets all requirements for many farmers who desire big, dense twine bales. It's a big brother to the 14T with all of the features that make the 14T the outstanding baler in its field. Twine is supplied from a big capacity box to these precision knotters. Accurate tying makes knots like these that stay tied. Groovers in the bale case form grooves in the bale where twine snuggles in, protecting it from snagging and slipping off the bale. This solid square-cornered bale is yours with the new 214T twine tie baler. For those who prefer or require wire-tied bales, here's the new 214W baler. It's ideal for commercial hay growers and for those of you who stack your bales in the field. Bales made with the 214W stand up to weather and arrive at the market in top condition. Wire is fed from these two big capacity wire boxes to this efficient tying mechanism. You're assured of dependable knotting bale after bale. Simple adjustments assure just the kind of bale you want. It will handle Stack and feed better, sell quicker, bringing more money. For wire-tied bales, the new 214W is the baler for you. 
But the biggest bailing news is this exclusive one-man bailing system. Include a 14T baler with bail ejector and this new elevator with barn conveyor in your plans for 1958. decorating all to me and I'll absolutely guarantee you'll be positively dazed and completely amazed at my fabulous skill and speed give me ribbon give me crepe and I'll have the barn in shape in an hour that's all the time I need I don't believe it can't conceive it I don't believe it it can't be done. As a hunter, I'm the best, and I'm sure you'll be impressed when I tell you what I got the other day. Fifty ducks with one shot, and believe it or not, they were flying at least a mile away. I don't believe it, can't conceive it, I don't believe it, it can't be done. In an average working day, I bale a thousand tons of hay, and I'll mow a hundred acres just for fun. Then I sharpen all the plows, and I milk a hundred cows. After that, I'll say the day is done. I don't believe it, can't conceive it. I don't believe it, it can't be done. I don't believe it, it can't be done. No, sir, it just can't be done. What's that, Grandpa? What can't be done? Well, we were just talking about a tractor, Tommy. One that's supposed to pull a three-bottom plow, like yours there. I say it won't do it. Well, my down here pulls my plow, all right. See, Dad, there's your proof. <laughs> uh, Johnny Severson is willing to bring out a 420 any time and show us what it'll do. Oh, Shaw, sure. we're all too busy. Stevenson ought to know. You ought to have enough power in a tractor in order to... It's got more power than his Model B, Dad. You figuring on trading in your B? No, it's still running fine. And there are times when I need two tractors, even on my small farm. Say, gee willikers, Mother and Peggy be here pretty soon, and I've got work to do. Poor Mr. Gordon. Has to work all the time, even when he comes to my house. He asked for it. Need any help? Now, never mind you, fellas. Betty's going to help me. Now, let's see. We got everything now. Mmm. Hickory chips. Hickory chips for flavor. Oh, not now. That's a come after. Yes, sir. Hickory chips for flavor. Betty, everything ready? Everything's ready. Good, good. Darn this hat. I wonder what's keeping Mother and Peggy. Gee, these coals are just about right. Here they come. Oh, I'll get uh, the steaks from the kitchen. What's going on over there? Who's in that funny get-up? Why, it's Tom. <laughs> of all... <laughs> Tom, what are you up to? That get-up. <laughs> what in the world are you... All right, everybody. A one and a two. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday oh. to you. Happy birthday, dear mother. Happy birthday to you. 
Oh, Tom, you remembered for once. <laughs> well, I can't afford to forget every year, Mother. Peggy and Betty helped me. They tricked you into going to town. Oh. <laughs> but it was his idea, Mother. Really, all I did was make a salad. But here are the steaks, Mr. Gordon. Oh, wonderful. Mm. Tom, where on earth did you get that hat and apron? <laughs> well, the man on TV said you couldn't cook without the proper costume. <laughs> well, the coals are just right. Now then, how do you have your steaks? Oh, I like mine well done. Medium, Medium rare, Tom. Medium rare for me. Go ahead. There you are, son. Grandpa, I mean a bird. Oh, now, Tommy, they're all right. Here's your medium rare, Molly. Thank you, Tom. Grandpa, I mean a bird. Young man, you should learn never to embarrass the cook. But they're burnt. Here, Tommy, <laughs> there are two new winners. Thank you. I'm going to roast on my self. <laughs> there you are, boy. Gee, Dad, I didn't know you could cook like this. It's news to me, too. How about preparing lunch for my guild next week? <laughs> We're looking for someone to cook the church supper next Wednesday. What am I offered? My great success is due to many years' experience wiping dishes for Mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the telephone. I'll get it. Well, it's probably some of the neighbors. Smelled my cooking and want to come over. <laughs> hello. Oh, well, hello, Eric. This is Johnny Severson. Severson? Hello, Johnny. Say, Eric, I got in a carload of new tractors this afternoon, and there's a 420 row crop utility among them. I'd like to bring it out, show you what it can do. Tom Gordon and Ralph are over here now, and we were just talking about the 420. I'll bet old Tom is again it. Well, not exactly. He just won't believe it will pull three bottoms. Listen, Eric. You tell that old buzzard that I'll make him a proposition. He can choose the field, set the time, and I'll bet him the best hat in town that I can pull three bottoms at normal plowing depth with this 420. I'll sure tell him. We'll let you know when to come, provided he takes up your bet. It's a deal. Bye, Eric. Bye. Well. Who was it? Johnny Severson. Uh -huh. Sure. Interrupting our birthday party to talk tractors, I suppose. He didn't know about the party, but he did talk tractors. He did, huh? Yes. He got in a new 420 today. Wants to bring it out. Oh, Eric, I don't know. And he I... threw a challenge right at you. Huh? What was that, Eric? He'll bet you the best hat in town that the 420 will pull three bottoms. And you choose the field and set the time. <laughs> oh, what more could you ask for, Dad? Yeah. What more could I ask for? What more could I ask for? Why, nothing, by golly. Not a thing. <laughs> Not a single thing. <laughs> <laughs> I choose the field. This ought to stop Johnny's tractor. <laughs> You're out kind of early, aren't you? I'm out winning that new hat. I just picked the field that'll whip Johnny and his tractor. Yeah, where? Backside of my farm. It'll stop him all right. <laughs> Hard as rock. And it hasn't rained in nearly three weeks. <laughs> 
Well, Johnny should have thought of that. Say, when we have him out? Today or Monday? Uh, Ralph and I are bailing hay on Monday. What about Tuesday? Fine. What do you say? Let's run into town now and make the date with Johnny. Good. And why not pick up Ralph on the way in? He'd like to see those new tractors, too. Okay. I'll have Betty call him. All right. Anytime. All right, Johnny, I'll be in to see you in a couple of days. Fine, Don. So long. So long. The Gordon Posse. I didn't do it, fellas. Remember my wife and children. Well, you should have been thinking of them when you offered that silly bet. You've lost the price of a new hat, Johnny. On the contrary, Tom. I made the bet because I've needed a new hat for years and couldn't afford to buy one. But there's the outfit that's going to win it for me. Boy, what a swell-looking deal. Nice, isn't it? Hey, you've got power steering on your 420 now. Yes, sir. It's a brand-new feature. Imagine. Power steering on a little tractor like this. Size doesn't mean everything, Tom. Most everybody wants power steering these days. It makes work a lot easier. Makes life more pleasant. I sure wish I had it on my 40. Relax, son. Relax. Haven't they changed the steering wheel? They've tilted it down. Makes it even more comfortable to drive. And optional five-speed transmission gives you another speed of six and a quarter miles. That's in addition to your top speed of 12 miles an hour. What's this lever? Well, that's the lever that engages and disengages the power takeoff. However, a continuous running power takeoff is available. Say, that would work swell with your number 10 chopper. It would. Use a four-row cultivator on this, Johnny? Oh, sure, Tom. That's where this tractor saves a lot of money. You can cultivate just as many acres in a day as with a big tractor in four row, with a lot less fuel. And with dual touch matic you raise the front and rear rigs independently and lower them the same way when going over grass waterways or at the end of the rows. This looks like the tractor I need. Now, if you want a direction reverser, instead of the continuous running power takeoff, you can have it. What's that for, Johnny? Well, its biggest use is in loading manure and jobs like that. Uh, must be quite a gadget. I'll demonstrate it when I bring the tractor out. Say, I want to show you something brand new. Well, is this the new LP job? Yeah, it's the first one I've had in. It's the same tractor as the other 420s all the way through, except that the engine's designed for LP fuel. Same features, same horsepower. Uh, speaking of horsepower and demonstrations, that's what we really came to town for. How about next Tuesday at my place? That's fine with me. The ground's kind of hard and dry, but I'll take you on. Hasn't rained for three weeks. Remember, Johnny, you said I could name the time and the place. Right. And I'm not a bit worried. The 420 is rated as a 2-3 plow tractor. And I know that it will handle three bottoms in any soil around here. Yeah. You don't know the soil in my pasture, Johnny. Your pasture? Yeah. I'm going down to Billy Wilson's and pick out a new hat now size seven and an eight. Tell him to save a seven and a quarter for me. Okay. <laughs> Pasture, huh? Maybe the old bugger's got me at that. you're taking advantage of Johnny, maybe just a wee little bit? Mother, I've told you twice. Johnny insisted that I set the time and the place. Can I help it if it hasn't rained? No, but you would never set a plow in that dried out field if it weren't to win an argument and a hat. And now for the weather report for this area. Partly overcast Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. 
but there is no indication of rain to relieve the prolonged dry spell now going into the fourth week. No rain before Tuesday. <laughs> Tom Gordon, I'm ashamed of you. Hey, what's that? Say, whose side are you on anyway? about ready. We thought you'd ride with us. Tommy has to be there for Sunday school in a few minutes, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, don't wait for us. Go ahead. Some rain we had last night. Radio said two inches. We sure needed it, too. Every place but on your dad's farm. I'll bet dad's out there now, seeing how far the rain soaked in. Now, don't pick on Dad Gordon. He's the best friend I've got. You ain't my best Oh, we're just kidding, Tommy. But we'd better get going or we'll be late for Sunday school. Bye, Tommy. Bye. Johnny Severson. What's he coming out so early for? Well, it's Tuesday. He probably needs a new hat to wear tonight. Well, I'll be... Call Ralph and Eric. Tell them to come right over. Hi there, Johnny. Hello, Tom. Kind of early for you fellas, isn't it? No, not when we have work to do. Nice rain we had Sunday. Yeah, crop sure needed it. And the pastures, too? Huh? Well, uh, you fellas go out through that gate. Uh, we'll plow the east end of the pasture. Good. Bill and I will open the land and get the plow adjusted. Well, Ralph and Eric will be along pretty soon. We'll come right out. Okay. plow isn't running very level, is it, Johnny? That's what Bill's fixing right now. You see, all you have to do on this three-point hitch to level the plow sideways is turn this crank. Now, if your plow is nosing in or running out, you level it four on F with this turnbuckle. Simple, isn't it? Well, she's all set, Eric. Want to take her around? You betcha.
Doing plenty of grunting, pulling those three bottoms. Oh, Dad. So, this is everything I've been wanting. You like it, huh? It's really got the stuff. And Johnny, I discovered it has a foot throttle on it. Nice, huh? Gives you 25% increase in speed no matter where your hand throttle is set. It's great for getting around in close quarters and in transporting. Let me take her around one. Okay. Man, what a tractor. Dad, you've got to try this power steering. Well, maybe. I told you I'd demonstrate the direction reverser. Bill, get up on the tractor and we'll show them how it works. Okay. If you're going forward and want to back up, you simply operate the clutch, pull the control lever, and back up without shifting gears. To go forward, operate the clutch and push the lever forward. You can reverse your direction of travel with a transmission in any gear. Speeds up your operation and gives you all forward speeds in reverse. Hmm. Must be quite a gimmick. Another feature is the power-adjusted rear wheels. You simply loosen these four nuts. Set these two stops at the position desired. Ease in the clutch, and the engine power slides the wheels in or out on these spiral rails. You mean you don't need a jack? Just a special wrench, and that comes with a tractor. Dad, you've got to take that tractor for a round. Well, okay, if you insist. Bill, swing it around for Tom. All right. I didn't think he'd do it. Well, Johnny, I guess I owe you a $3 hat. What did you say about a $30 hat? $30 hat? Bet was. Best hat in town. <laughs> okay, Johnny. 
It's worth the price just to see this little tractor pull three bottoms and prove it can be done. <laughs> yes, sirree, it can be done. With the 420, it can be done. That's the one to do it. There's really nothing to it. We've seen it. It can be done. <laughs> tractor has a standard three-point hitch, can now match high-speed cutting capacity to his tractor's pick-up-and-go convenience. Mowing a full seven-foot swath, the dependable number nine will cut up to 35 acres per day. Easy on and easy off, this mower can be put on or removed in about three minutes. Mower and cutter bar are carried on a heavy-duty rectangular steel frame. The slip clutch protected roller chain drive is fully enclosed, runs in a constant oil bath. Watch the action of the safety spring release as the cutter bar hits this post. The operator simply backs up to lock the bar in place, raises the bar, drops it to continue mowing with no damage done. And speaking of ease of handling, Watch how easy it is to make neat, square, clean cut corners with the number nine. It's a compact outfit with maneuverability built in. Another brand new mower is this number eight caster wheel mower. Only its frame, hitch, and caster wheel make it different from the number nine. Its flexible hitch and caster wheel design keep the number eight following the contour of the ground closely for clean cutting at high speeds in all crops and field conditions. The outstanding new number eight is the successor to the fastest selling mower of all time, the John Deere number five. The number eight works with any tractor. With its quick attach hitch, you attach it or detach it in less than five minutes with no heavy lifting. You can condition your hay while you mow in one fast, low-cost trip through the field. Hook up equipment for the number eight and number nine mowers for trailing the number one hay conditioner makes a compact, easy-to-handle outfit. You cut curing time up to 50% compared with the time required for unconditioned hay. You'll get better hay, preserve the leaves, and retain carotene. It will pay you big dividends to investigate the many advantages of conditioning your hay as you mow it with either the new number eight or number nine mowers. Behind the next door is a great new machine. As soon as you see it, you'll know what we mean. It does the job easier, does the job better. Remember, John Deere builds machinery to last. 
Ever since its introduction, the 55 Combine has been the leader of the self-propels. Today, the new 55 is an even better combine. It's easier and more comfortable to operate, and it's still more efficient mechanically. With this new 55, you'll be able to harvest even more acres per day to save more grain, regardless of the crop or field condition. It's available with either 12 or 14 foot platform. The 55 is at home in any combinable crop, whether it's standing grain or a windrowed crop. Let's take a closer look at some of its new and improved features. One major change is the method of adjusting the spacing between cylinder and concave. It's done outside the machine. With this ratchet, you can change the spacing quickly when changing from one crop to another. The seat is easily adjusted backward or forward for greatest comfort. All the controls are convenient to the operator. Notice, too, the new inclined automotive-type steering wheel. More comfort for the operator. Other changes inside the new 55 include new spring steel concave extension fingers, reinforced wing beater, a new reinforced front concave feed plate, and new longer return pans for the straw walkers. Here's a bird's eye view of the operator's platform. See how the variable speed and platform hydraulic controls have been relocated for improved accessibility. A center delivery auger feeds the clean grain into the new 55 bushel grain tank. A new John Deere six-cylinder, 64 horsepower engine powers the new 55. All of these changes and improvements add up to a better combine, an improved self-propelled that is bound to save you money through many years of dependable harvesting. There's more to the story than what you have seen. Again, we're presenting a new machine designed to make farming much less of a chore. John Deere has the answer. Meet the new all-purpose chuck wagon mixer feeder. Here's an outfit that saves time and hard work, cuts costs for feeders and dairymen. It is designed to handle a variety of hauling and unloading jobs. It unloads from a side conveyor into elevators, bunks, hoppers, and forage blowers. Gets around easily on every job. No more heavy work. No more bottlenecks at the point of storage with this outfit handling unloading assignments. A single control provides five speeds for unloading to the side or out of the rear of the chuck wagon. You can match the volume of material to the job. If you want to deliver chopped forage from the rear of the chuck wagon into a blower, here's how simple the job is with this self-unloading outfit. But the big savings in time, effort, and money is the bunk feeding operation, where you can feed a hungry herd in minutes right in the feedlot. The chuck wagon mixes supplements and concentrates thoroughly into forage or silage with three beaters for uniform feeding and palatability. Every cow or steer gets a full share to produce more milk or more pounds of meat. Your cattle will return a greater profit on well-balanced, well-mixed feed. Like this healthy-looking herd of steers, they will really go for the mixture of fresh-cut forage and ground corn. Many farmers will prefer to mount the chuck wagon on a truck, as this owner has done. He is unloading grass silage in the winter. You'll appreciate this speed and ease of feeding your livestock. What's more, the chuck wagon will come in handy on many other hauling jobs. It will pay you to see your dealer about a chuck wagon mixer feeder for your operations. Another big hit in our power parade. His mix on the list, it's the best ever made. So take a good look and we're sure you will say it's just what is needed in farming today. Here's a new belt conveyor forage blower that's designed with plenty of capacity to put chopped forage crops and hay into silos or barns in a hurry. The hopper is 11 and 1 half feet long. 
a full 30 inches wide with sloping sides to prevent spillage. And it's plenty deep. This wide rubberized belt conveyor provides steady delivery of all crops to the powerful fan. It runs on these full length slats, preventing buildup of material beneath. It's built low to handle all wagons and trucks. The blower throat is wide and high for fast delivery to a big capacity fan with straight paddles. This adjustable oscillating leveling device keeps material moving at uniform volume. Clutch levers on each side of the hopper permit operation from either side. The new 55 blower can be belt driven or PTO driven as shown here. The power takeoff drive is efficient, provides smoother operation. It sets up for operation from either side of the blower. Let's watch the new 55 blower in action. It really eliminates bottlenecks at the silo, keeps wagons rolling. Any width of wagon or truck can be handled by the extra long, low, wide, and deep hopper. What's more, it's an easy outfit to transport and set for any job. The new John Deere handles material from self-unloading wagons with ease, feeds a steady stream of hay and forage crops into the silo. You can unload side delivery wagons into the wide, deep hopper with equal ease. The 55 has all the capacity you'll ever need for storing your hay and forage crops. It's a forage blower that's a profitable investment for every feeder. Here's an investment in double duty performance. The new forage box attachment for the Model M power takeoff spreader. For less than half the cost of a forage wagon, you can make your Model M spreader a self-unloading forage wagon and get full use of the spreader too. It's a big capacity outfit that makes feeding fast and easy. It unloads from the side or rear into elevator hoppers, feed bunks, forage blowers, trench or bunk silos, and handles other hauling jobs. With the side conveyor attachment, you'll really dish out feed in a hurry into bunks. The regular spreader beaters mix supplements into the material as it is delivered into the bunks. This farmer is feeding ground corn with fresh cut chopped alfalfa, providing a balanced ration for his herd. Many will find the forage box spreader combination useful for rear unloading. Here it is without the side conveyor being ready to deliver chopped hay into an elevator hopper. The tractor driver then selects one of two unloading speeds with this lever. There goes the chopped hay to storage in a hurry without any manual labor. It doesn't take long to fill a silo at this rate. Whatever your feed handling jobs may be, you'll find this forage box for the Model N PTO spreader speeds work, eliminates labor, and cuts costs of operation. Head into the field with a new Model B Roller Harrow when you want to prepare the best seed bed you've ever seen. In most cases, it can replace the conventional disc harrow and drag harrow on such work as breaking up clods in plowed ground and finishing seed beds. It's available in 6, 8, 10, and 12 foot sizes. This is the 10 foot. The Roller Harrow does an excellent job of packing the soil and eliminating air pockets thus promoting a firmer seed bed. Hydraulic control raises the unit for short, easy turns. Let's have a look at it close up. There are two rows of spring teeth in the Model B roller harrow. 
and two hand control levers adjust the angle of these teeth. This in turn determines the depth of penetration of the unit. The second adjustment is a hand screw on the drawbar, which regulates the amount of pressure on the front and rear rollers. Ask for a demonstration of the roller harrow, and from the driver's viewpoint, look back and see what good work it does. Notice the flexibility of the spring teeth as they operate between the two sets of rollers. There's a lot more about this new unit that will be of interest to you. It's a new way to better seedbed preparation. Meet the new 15 Rotary Chopper, a low-cost, versatile performer on many jobs. It's ideal for bringing the pasture to the cows, making grass silage, and handling many other jobs. Big news for feeders and dairymen is the 15's new Just Right Length of Cut. Your herds will like it better, and you will find it easier to store and remove from storage. For the answer to its good work, Let's look inside the auger housing. Material is delivered to a combination fan and cutter head. Three keen edged knives on the fan, six if you desire, chop against this specially hardened stationary knife in the auger housing, providing just the right cut for palatability and easy handling. By turning the fan manually, you can see the action of the knives. It's as simple as that. And simplicity is the key to the 15's rugged dependability. But let's take a look at the job this 15 has done. Here's proof of the good work it does. Just the length of cut your cattle will like best. The 15 is easy to handle in the field. It's an offset machine. You don't run down the crop with the tractor, wasting valuable feed. The adjustable discharge spout delivers material into any part of a wagon trailing the chopper, or it can be delivered into a truck running alongside. Low cost, versatile, rugged, and dependable, the new John Deere 15 rotary chopper is a profitable investment for any farm. When you head into the field with a new model LD liquid fertilizer distributor, you are ready with one small unit for big capacity, low cost distribution of liquid fertilizer. Changing the distributor from a narrow six foot four inch transport width to working width of 13 feet four inches is simple and fast. You simply pull the lock pins that hold the extension booms and lower them into position. Capacity of this distributor is more than one ton. Metering heads are spaced at intervals of 10 inches along the booms. Uniform head pressure is always maintained because the LD tanks are vented at the bottom. Each of the four carrying tanks feeds four metering heads. A liquid level gauge is plainly visible from the tractor seat. The fertilizer flows directly from these tanks through sediment screens and jars to the heads. You have a constant visual check of the application rate. When you want to stop the flow of fertilizer, just push back on a handy control lever. Pull ahead to start the flow. Pastures are treated as easily as finished seed beds. No matter what you want to fertilize, the LD is ready to take over. It will handle the job quickly and efficiently, cutting costs, upping yields, and increasing net profits. And here's something else that we want you to see. Designed by John Deere for economy. It practically pays for itself in one season. Just watch it in action and you 
you'll see the reason. Picking and shelling corn in one fast, easy operation is a sure way to cut costs and increase profits. That's exactly what you can do now with this new 50 sheller attachment for the 227 corn picker with minimum investment. The sheller is a neat, compact unit that operates from the tractor's PTO. The ears are delivered from the picker directly into the sheller, where an auger carries them into the 56-inch cylinder for shelling. The cylinder spins at 650 RPM inside a heavy perforated cage. Clean shelling without loss is the rule. A blast of air from a large fan cleans the corn thoroughly before it is augered into the wagon. The entire unit is designed for field installation and is quickly interchangeable with the wagon elevator so that part of the crop can be picked in the usual way if desired. The 50 sheller saves more corn, reduces handling and storage, and leaves the cobs in the field to improve soil texture. Here's proof of good work. Look at the clean, uncracked corn. Corn that is ready for storage, mechanical drying, or for ensilage storage, depending upon the moisture content. The 50 sheller is a real moneymaker. It permits harvesting earlier while field losses are lower and while market prices are higher. Get complete information about it now. A product you'll want for your very own is next in the line of machines to be shown. A short demonstration is all that it takes to show why it's better than all other makes. Leading the parade of new planters is this 494, a 4 row corn and bean planter that will outdate and outperform all others. The new 494 will drill, hill drop, or check plant your crop with absolute accuracy. Everything from the big capacity seed cans to the built-in spring pressure on the runner openers is standard equipment on this new high-speed planter. Adjusting the planting depth takes but a few moments. Simply pulling and then reinserting the spring locking pin in each of the four units completes the task. The press wheel tension is automatically adjusted to firm the soil over the seed, regardless of soil conditions. Lowering the planter removes spring tension from the fertilizer depth control and facilitates changing the placement to any depth up to six or seven inches. The main frame of the 494 is built to stand up under the most severe conditions, and the overall design is for convenience. Notice that the seed hoppers are lower for easy filling, and that the large three-quarter bushel capacity will mean fewer stops for refilling during the planting season. The fertilizer attachment is also low for easy filling, and the lids can be removed from either side. The capacity of the dry fertilizer attachment has been increased by 50%. Boxes now hold 600 pounds. A liquid fertilizer attachment is also available for those who prefer that method of applying fertilizer. Speed of planting is another feature. With the 494, you can hill drop 50% faster than you could with the famous 490, which it replaces. The 494 has eye appeal. It's a low to the ground planter that is designed to set new standards for dependable planting. Notice that the runner opener and gauge wheel are close together, giving excellent depth control in rough ground. Stop in soon and ask your dealer to show you the 494, the newest corn and soybean planter on the market. If it's savings you want most especially labor to give you more time to go visit your neighbor, here is a setup most people call grand. It takes much less time to cover the land. Wherever combinable crops are grown, the word is spreading. 
the new John Deere 95 self-propelled has 30% greater threshing, separating, and cleaning capacity. Add this increased capacity to its 16-foot cut, and you have the ultimate in modern combines. From the cutter bar right on back, the 40-inch cylinder and separator, the four long straw walkers, and the huge cleaning area of over 4,000 square inches, all are built for greater capacity and designed to save more of the crop. Operator comfort has been designed into the new 95. The operator's platform is located up high out of the dust and dirt and ahead of the heat and noise of the engine. Notice that all of the controls are at the operator's fingertips. Proved power steering takes the work out of harvesting, and individual brakes make it easy for the operator to maneuver the combine for sharp turns at the end of a field, help him to hold a full swath at all times. In this down crop of barley, the platform is almost shaving the ground. Every inch of the straw has to pass through the combine, but because of its big capacity, the 95 is saving all of the grain. Switching from one location to another, we see the 95 harvesting a good crop of standing wheat. A large 60 bushel grain tank matches the threshing capacity of the new 95. Rigorous tests in all parts of North America have proved this combine's design and a multitude of crops have proved its versatility. Now we're in a heavy crop of flax that's running about 60 bushels to the acre. Here's where threshing efficiency and good cleaning is of utmost importance because this flax is selling for $3 a bushel. The 95 assures you maximum savings in any combinable crop. Let's watch as the combine drives up to a 1,000 bushel transport truck and discharges its precious cargo. The grain tank can be unloaded in a hurry while either stopped or on the move. How's this for a clean sample of a hard-to-thresh crop? Here we are in windrowed wheat, and again, the big capacity of the 95 is evident. Notice how fast this operator is traveling, because he is threshing a comparatively light windrow. With selective ground speed control, he is matching the forward speed of the combine with crop and ground conditions, taking advantage of the 95's big capacity. The four-speed transmission offers a working range from a minimum of seven-tenths miles per hour for extremely heavy crops to a maximum speed of 12 and a half miles per hour for transporting. There's a lot of quality built into the 95 level land that you can't see. Quality such as sealed for life bearings, rubber bushings that require no lubrication, drives that are protected against breakage by slip clutches, and plenty of strength built into every unit. They all add up to dependable service year after year. The power plant on the 95 is a new John Deere 80 horsepower engine. There's plenty of power for every requirement, and it's conveniently accessible for servicing. You'll find that this new 95 level land combine is everything a grain grower could ask for. It's the combine that will take extra bushels of grain from the fields at a lower cost per bushel than ever before. Just by checking. 
give you time to register. We three 